<laughs> well, the keynote just got out at ISTE, and there are poster sessions going on, and it's really loud. So uh, if you just join, let me know if you can hear me okay, because there is a lot of noise. Uh, people are coming out of the keynote over on this table, so that's always a, a, a big attraction. <laughs> there's, there's some really neat things uh, going on here, and I want to talk to some of these poster people. But I also don't want to put the microphone in front of their face while they're while they're talking to other people. But this one looks really great. Um, global kids, global authors, and it looks like it might be a collaborative book creator project. So I'm excited to hear more about it. On this TV screen, they had a QR code that uh, led you to something. So um, maybe that'll that'll be showing up soon. Yeah, look at some of the the books that she has here. This is really cool. I'm gonna check this out too. So yeah. Enjoy the comment. Hi. Do you mind if I make a recording? <laughs> Do you wanna take the microphone and tell us about what you have going on here? This is part of our uh, global cl collaboration project, um, Global Kids, Global Authors. So what you see behind me are examples of the books that we have currently published in the iBookstore. Um, our elementary students, we found other elementary students from around the world to participate in our global books. Um, so using Book Creator app, which is one of the best apps to use for bookmaking. Um, so this is what this, this is. If you'd like to join our global book, please email me, kpayno at avenues.org. Okay. Yeah. How hard is it to get a book into the iBook store? Um, it's not difficult. It's just a little time consuming. You have to have patience in order to do it. Um, combining, the, combining all the book creator pages was the most challenging part of this project. Um, but then uploading it to the iBook store was was pretty easy. Um, it's just you have to wait. Um, they vary. I have one book that's uh, 50 some odd pages, another one that's 30. Thanks, yeah, book Creator is one of my very favorite apps. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like your kids did a, did a lot of great work here. Awesome. What was, if I can ask you one more question, what was the biggest benefit of uh, making collaborative books? Just the whole learning experience. Our students got to learn from other students from around the world. Um, one of the favorite units was uh, a Schools Around the World, which was our favorite book that we've created so far because the students got to learn what other languages were spoken in different other schools around the world, um, what they sounded like when they sang their school mascot songs, um, just all those different things components of the book and the students got to have the book since we have iPads in our school each student got to have their book on their own iPads so they can go and read at their own leisure um, and the, all the books are multimedia books so there's videos um, so we did first and second grade mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's cool. <laughs> That's neat. Thanks. I'm going to look them up uh, in the bookstore. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I see something that says a distance teaching project. There's some kids on the floor. <laughs> Let's see what else we have here. Hello. Do you mind being recorded? <laughs> Are you the, the recording guy? <laughs> Do you want to take the microphone and uh, tell me what you have here? Do you have some green screen stuff you've done? Well, what we have here is an exposition that we made called Whistling. And it is to make child children to to see the our how do you say it? important monuments of Mexico City mm -hmm. from another level of wow. 
this. Right. So the here. The video behind that is great. Where did that video come from? Um, we uh, recorded with a drone. There, there's over there. You can go and visit it. We are going to fly it, and we all captured this with the drone. With we have the Independence Angel. Mm -hmm. Uh, some temples. We have also the Zócalo. That's a very important monument for Mexico City. And that's all. Okay. What's about my, our project? Yeah. So, so how many times are you in this video? Well, I'm not in the video because they didn't choose me to make the one of the parts because uh -huh. they didn't like organize it well. But it is very good made, and we are uh, proud of it. Proud of it. Sharing. That's awesome. Some great green screen work. But their their school colors had green in their tie, so it had a neat effect. <laughs> See, this one's called Storytelling Across Nations. I'll make my way through here. <laughs> Excuse me. Here's a, a one called Whaling History, a collaborative learning program. I should have looked at the program. Obviously, there's a theme <laughs> of uh, international collaboration. That must be what, what these posters are all about. <laughs> I should pay more attention to the program. You are welcome, Angie, for streaming. This is, this is uh, somewhat embarrassing for me. I'm a little shy, so carrying on a camera and talking to people is, is uh, really pushing me along. But OK, this one has is really colorful, so I've got to see it. <laughs> Tech trip. <laughs> Thanks, Sue. Let's see if we can get the microphone up there. Capri, Sicily. No, we don't go Sicily. We go to, uh, I was in Sicily, <laughs> Tivoli. Um, so we hit a lot of really great places. Hi, how are you? <laughs> you don't mind? Uh, no, that's okay. fine. <laughs> what, what, do they, uh, what do they use to create their project? Um, this is Google Sites. Yeah, we use, we're a Google school, and so we use Google Sites to do this. It's really easy because they can all be on sharing a page. I can give them all access to the same thing. It's just part of their email and and what they're using. Um, after they see something, if I can get this to load, I don't know if it will, um, but after they see something, they journal about it that night. One student will be in charge of blogging out to the parents, so they're really going to polish what they do. The other students are journaling and just processing, and they're each assigned two nights during the trip to be the really polished blogger. Um, and when we get back from the trip, they help put together the slideshow, but they also write up TripAdvisor reviews that we post to TripAdvisor itself. And so what it does is kind of brings it full circle. They've gathered all this information, they've learned things, they've now experienced it, and now they're going to give it back to TripAdvisor uh, and let other people experience it as well. It, what's nice is that it really works in any curriculum. I mean, the process itself can be used in a very small scale where each person's in charge of, if you're going to one place, one museum, they're each in charge of an artifact there. Or you can do it on a larger scale over, you know, our 10-day trip. And what age? We're ninth graders that do it. Yeah. Uh, that that was really interesting. Um, they they take trips and they they do a, a variety of things. Uh, so they go to a museum, and then uh, there you go. I this. <laughs> Uh, they, they go to a museum, and then they come back, they do a variety of activities, and one of the things they do is post about it on TripAdvisor. 
And so that's really authentic. They're letting other people know if they should take the time to visit that place. And I, I've done that with Amazon book reviews, but I hadn't thought about doing it like on field trips and then posting on TripAdvisor. That's, that's great. <laughs> All right, so, so next on my wish list is a wide angle lens. I also wish Periscope would let me uh, record landscape instead of portrait so I don't look like I'm taking vertical video the whole time, which I guess I am. <laughs> this one's called Two Techie Teachers Empowering Creativity Fueled by Technology and it's really busy <laughs> you might, might have to come back to this one later If you uh, spot something that you want to see, just uh, let me know in a comment, and I'll, and I'll walk that way. This one's called the Global Nomads Group. They do a science cross-cultural exchange. That's pretty neat. Thank you, Hodge DV. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's nothing like moving through crap crafts like this. <laughs> All right, here's one called Connecting the Next Digital Leaders, Developing Student Capacity for Success Online. And they have a lot of things here. <laughs> so, so now I'm being photographed doing photographs. So t she her work boyfriend. <laughs> Since you take a picture of me, you get to be on video. Well, hi. Two of you together. We have a friend who calls you her work boyfriend because she's been following Learning in Hand for like five years. Ever since we first got an iPad one. She's like, oh my God. But she's not here. Wait, so wait, take my picture with him so you can send it to Jean. Okay. I'm on your camera now. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm actually live broadcasting. There, oh there are like 36 people watching now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you seen any uh, poster sessions you recommend right now? Well, I went to the Minecraft Power Grid at 24, but n his colleague is stuck in the airport, so it's not glitzy or glamorous, but he knows his stuff. And I'm really into making Minecraft relevant, so he's doing good stuff. Thanks for sharing. Say, say hi to my girlfriend for me. <laughs> Jean, yeah. I knew her name. <laughs> hi, Victoria. How are you? So, so I'm on Periscope right now. Do you mind being re you noticed? Yeah, okay. okay you want, you want to give your spiel to, uh, to people? Yeah, we want to know what's going on. Yeah, I'll go back for you. My partner, Dave, and I, he works in a different school district, but we kind of created this little continuum of digital citizenship, just scaffolding it for people so it's easy for them to understand. So we started with a baseline, so kind of creating that class contract, creating those understandings of what acceptable use policies, how to use standards and stuff like that, moving all the way to independent creation. So our kids are actually posting independently, they're creating digital works independently, sharing them and collaborating with peers online, and commenting and interacting. So so those are two totally different parts like of the spectrum, right? Yeah. So we have kind of brought in little scaffolds along the way, so steps that you can take based on your comfort level or the comfort level of students or just the ability level of students so that they can make their way closer to that independent creation phase where we as adults operate on the in the digital space. So, yeah. so, so out of this whole project, what was the most unexpected thing that students have done once you turned it over to them? Um, I really honestly think the engagement with creating was amazing for us, at least at my school. Um, I can't, Dave would have to speak for himself, but my kids are creating their own YouTube videos, and they're they're excited about 
making a screencast about math concepts, which I never actually thought would be a thing, but they're like, we want to do these word walls, and they take a picture of a math concept and explain it and provide examples. And not only is that amazing formative assessment data for me, it's data for the parents, it's, it's the ability to report on those kind of things, see the growth visibly, and then also have them sharing in that digital space alongside all of those math concepts they're already learning about. So it was really cool to see that piece. Three, four for me. Yeah. So, yeah, I found that, too, like when I taught fifth grade. If it was their idea or if I coached them to make them think it was their idea, then they went with it so much further than, okay, this is the assignment. We're all doing the same thing. So that's great. Yeah, absolutely. So my kids are so independent now that I actually don't have to do any direct instruction at the beginning of every lesson. Sometimes I will if we're scaffolding in a new piece or something like that. But it's not a, a very often. It's just go do your thing. And they can pick from any of these choices. Some are analog, some are digital. And then they'll be creating in that space. And, cre and they watch them at home or share them at home or share them on their blog and it's really, really rewarding. So. Well, I've been surprised sometimes with my students giving them a choice that they pick analog more often than I would suspect. Did, is that your experience too? Not necessarily. It depends on the task, I would actually say. Some kids, so I have, they had the choice of whether they wanted to do a word wall, for example, with math. On, like create a screencast, put it on YouTube, put it on your blog, or to do it in a math journal. I would say it was about roughly 50%, and some of them, some kids, sometimes they would choose paper, sometimes they would choose digital. So it depended on what they wanted to do in that moment. Um, and I think we're all different learners too. So sometimes I prefer to write on paper. I like sketch noting. Sometimes it's nice on paper. Sometimes it's nice on paper 53 on my iPad. It just depends on what my feeling is that day. Me too. I'm, I'm always changing. Yeah. So that's grade three, four. Somebody else. Oh, somebody answered in the little, little chat there too. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> thanks. Well, in this room, I think it's really important. So, um, hopefully everybody seems to be hearing us. Okay. So, so that's great. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but I'm going. It, it does, Periscope doesn't show me the battery level right now, so I was I flew in today, and I the whole time like, okay, got to keep my my phone charged and phone charged. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how I. I guess if I leave the app, I stop recording. So I don't know what my battery is yet. Well, I could, I'll go until I can't. <laughs> thanks, thanks for sharing. These are really uh, great projects, <laughs> and. And you have a link, because there's a lot of people who aren't at ISTE that are watching. And is the link in the, uh, like the poster session, like you sign in as a presenter, and there's, there's a link in there? There's a link here, I believe. Oh, and here's, uh, here's one for... This is the link, so Bitly, All right, I'll leave that there for, for a moment. Is, are you seeing the, the sound drops every few moments there? Bookbird. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you again, Victoria. <laughs> All right. Screenshot taken. Lost the connection. You know, uh, oh, the chat was blocking the image. Oh, darn. I, 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 like I'm still new to this Periscope thing. I'll have to remember to keep things toward the top of the screen if you really need to read it, huh? All right, I want to see if I can find this Minecraft one that I was told about. Led by a student. Oh, Craig Yen put on Twitter uh, resources from, from her session too. So check on, check on Twitter and people are so nice to share. All right, so these are, there are dozens of sessions happening right now. Let's see. Twenty-four. I don't think I'm going to be able to get close enough to hear him right now. All right, let's look. Look for some more. I might pause broadcasting for just a moment. To Hi, I'm Lucy Gray. This is the Global Education Conference. We just had a Global Education Day here at ISTE where 300 teachers came together and talked about global collaborative projects, and it was really exciting. And we're here helping to get more people involved. So that's it. Yeah. If they want to get more involved, where do they go? Globaleducationconference.com. Globaleducationconference.com. I, I like URLs that are easy to see, to say, yeah. Yeah, yeah and then our hashtag is globaled15. 
So you can see what we were doing today if you want to follow that and, and on Twitter. Hashtag Global Ed 15. Probably a lot of tweets that came out of that. We were trending today in Philadelphia. I was very excited. I think it's the first time anything I've ever done is tweeted. It's been trending. So, yeah. And we love, and I was periscoping all the, the Ignite talks that we did today. So I love Periscope. I love Meerkat. You're and you're smart to have a microphone with all. Yeah, I don't. I don't think uh, there's a whole story behind getting this microphone. Amazon was delayed, and I had to go. So, but, but I have it, and it, and I and it's very much worth it. Cool. Like you're like, like the the reporter on the road. I love this. This is great. Well, half my time was like, oh, can't get close enough to that person to talk to. Let's yeah. get. To oh, fun! This is great. Very creative. So you're the man on the street here now. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's. It might be stuck. There's. No, can anybody give some hearts just to make sure that anybody's alive? Periscope. I haven't figured that out. You give hearts just by uh, double tapping the screen. Oh, I had no idea. I had. No uh, but I don't know if um, web viewers can do that or not. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. 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 All right. Woohoo! Woohoo! Give me some love. No. Okay. There, there are hearts going right oh, there. So. Fun. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Hi everybody! Woo yeah, I, so I the other thing I need is a wide angle lens because yeah. like I do have long arms, but this you is. You know what you need. Let me show you what you need. Oh, she's, she's gonna show me what I need. All right. <laughs> so, th so yeah, I know you can only chat from the app, so you can only give hearts from the app as well. They really want you to get the app. Okay. I have a friend who is a filmmaking person. He's another Apple Distinguished Educator, and this is made by. Land part. If you want to look at this. All right, yeah, land like part. Oh. Uh, okay, so that's on my Amazon wish list, but it's. It's forty-eight or four? Four hundred. Yeah, it's four hundred. Yeah. You'll check out the app and you'll see that it's forty-eight. Yeah. The microphone. The microphone was well supposed to be. No, 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 no. It was like a hundred dollars on Amazon, but I had to get it locally for one hundred thirty because of this fiasco. But. So it's all like, smooth. Yeah, I Can I put, let's put my phone in it and see what happens. Okay. I'm not very good at balancing it. So the balance at first? Let's see. So you put it <laughs> Periscopers, you're going to be dizzy here. But this is, what, this is like, sometimes they call this like a gimbal. Is that what? Yes. Okay. And so then I turn it on. And it's supposed to stabilize and make yeah. things really and smooth no matter what. Yeah, yeah, it's covering the camera too a little bit. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you get the idea. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah. So, so you guys watching, it's we. You got to level it off and stuff. But then when you're walking around, it's not supposed to be as bumpy or jittery. It, I've I've seen. Yeah, like I said, it's in my Amazon wish list cart. I just uh, haven't pulled the trigger on it. <laughs> my, I guess I, ha I my phone is permanently stuck in your four hundred dollar uh, device. Sorry. <laughs> Any. Yeah, kind of thing. But I, I don't have it set up quite right, and I haven't figured this out. Like, you, there's a weight in here. Yeah, I think it's called a gimbal. It's a funny word, but that's what it does. It's made by Landpart. La Landpart is this this one. It's an ADE from Virginia, who used to teach film in universities, uh, turned me on to this at South by Southwest, and I'm like, I have to have that, and I went and bought it. So it's okay, so, so how how often do you use it? Once a month. Hey, four hundred dollars once a month. Wait, wait. But you're, wait you're busy and you're going to lots of different things, so you probably would use it a lot. So I'm not that busy. So, hi Ben, we watched your video yesterday. Your six seconds say, "Where were we?" At Hack Education. Somebody was talking about it. It was awesome. Yes, yes, yes. We were talking about that. Yeah. Ben, what, what's, what's this video? It's a six second stories for learning. Um, we did it for the K twelve online conference last year. Um, which was great. Are you periscoping or meerkatting? Okay. Yeah, yeah they just added embedding, so. Um, yeah. Side, then I, then I could do it, yeah. It's hard to do it. Mereception, yeah. Bye. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off for just a little bit and uh, check my battery. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching.